Good morning, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Looks like a bit of a war zone out there. It's windy today. When I went out there today, uh, what time was it? 10 before 7 on the way to the pool this morning. The garbage cans, those plastic garbage cans, a couple of them were in the middle of the street. I pulled them back and stood them up, went out to the pool. When I came back from the pool, they're all blown over again. It's March. It's gusty, gusty, windy. I know over there, you can see the flag on the ninja place there. There's nothing right now, but you watch during the day, or during the stream here. It's quiet, and then boom, like a tornado comes for a few seconds, and then it's quiet again. There's bicycles falling all over the place, everywhere. Out in front of the pool there this morning, in front of the sports center, there was a row of bicycles all collapsed. The garbage cans here, they're empty, of course. They were picked up during the night, so they just blow around. And I've got, to, I got a nose full of it today. I, I'm actually happy about this. Excuse me, I'll, I'll be emptying a tissue box here this morning, I think. It's not a cold, it's the uh, pollen in the air. In recent years, I haven't had much of it. But when I was younger, it was terrible every year. The past few years has been no big deal. But this morning, it's crazy. And I think what's happened is the high wind, it's just all over the whole place and the forests nearby are dumping their pollen. It's everywhere. If you had a black car this morning, it will have yellow stuff on the hood, you know. Do we have a keg? I don't know. I don't think I saw a keg out there. No, the, what we've got there, there's a basket. It's, a, you know, it's towels, used towels. It's windy. Windy and not. Windy and not. No replacement cone, not yet. I haven't got around to ordering it yet. This one will do for a while. I know I'll, I'll get onto Amazon and order it soon. Lots of stuff going on here that's a bit more priority than that. You know. <laughs> if there's anybody here who, who was in the shop yesterday. <laughs> there was, there was a gentleman who was in the chat here a few days ago, no names, whatever. He, he had asked Dave, can I, can I come over and maybe we can spend some, we can hang out together for a while. But he came over yesterday morning and at the very early, he was waiting outside when we opened at 10 o'clock and there was nobody here. So we hung out for a while, chatted. I heard a bunch of his story, chatted from mine. And the idea was on the table. He was, he was asking me, you know, can we, can we, you know, I'll buy you a beer later or something like this. And uh, I politely had to say that, you know, it's probably not going to happen. And, and over the next hour, he was here for about an hour and a half or two hours. And over the next couple of hours, he understood why this was not going to be possible. While he was standing here talking to me, whatever, 20, 30 minutes go by, and somebody else comes in, Dave, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. We start talking. This guy stands in line for a minute. 10, 15, 20 minutes go by, Dave, YouTube. <laughs> it was crazy. It was so much fun the last few days. If anybody's here that was here over the weekend, thanks very much for coming. I really had fun with everybody, chatting and listening to stories and... Uh, and telling lies and whatever. It was great fun meeting people. We, just, the prints were just disappearing hand over fist. There were three ladies here to help me. And there, there was one point, I think we set a new record, that two ladies were processing somebody's order and somebody's waiting with a print, somebody's waiting with two prints, somebody's waiting. I think there were three or four people waiting. And uh, it's just such good fun. Okay, work, work, work. You can see where we are at. I don't have the iPad with me. Its job is done. In the middle of all the chaos yesterday and then late last night after we closed the shop, I sat down, had dinner, and then finished the tracing, the face and the hair and the other stuff. Before going to bed, I went to the convenience store, printed it out, got it all sized up properly, and here we are. So this is what we're about to try. This is the result of all the tracing you saw the other day, the past few days. You can see where I cheated in one place. Do you see it? Those of you who know how this works, the kimono pattern. I drew it once. I said I told you I was going to do this. I drew it once and then in Photoshop, copy, paste, copy, paste, twist, twist, copy, paste, distort a little bit. It's, it's a Kate Middleton scandal, whatever. I've copied and pasted. I think, where's the one? I think I drew that one first. 
I can't remember. They're all the same anyway, because I, I copied and pasted, copied and pasted, copied and pasted. Does it matter? At the scale we're dealing with here, it doesn't matter. There's no way I can carve these at that scale, exactly the same shape. They're all going to be different shapes by the time we get to the end of this thing. So there's no problem. I didn't need to draw it 15 times. Just drawing it once is fine. Then the hand, I don't know. People are talking about this. The two hands, you know, I did, uh, I tried to make sense of the lines that were there. Also the face, the eyes and eyebrows were really quite rough. I think we've got a decent design here. Remember too, this is the tracing. What I'm able to carve is another story. I still wasn't sure about this finger. It is what it is. Hoxai drew what he drew. And if people think this looks like a foot and this is a gymnast, so be it. <laughs> I think he's happy. Yeah, somebody says he's happy. Okay, for a piece of wood, I mix feelings. This is probably going to be a one color print. I think actually we're just going to print the key block with nothing else. If it looks just too bare at the end of the day, I might do a gray block that will cover maybe part of the boat. If I really get thinking that we should dress it up a bit, we can put darker color inside the boat to make it, I don't know. I think it's going to be fine just as it was. This Hoxai design was intended to be a single color print, part of a book page. So I think we'll probably stick with that. Now what I've got, I'm going to use actually a bit of a larger piece of wood. It seems a bit, uh, a bit of a waste. We've just got this small area. Why would I have such a large piece of wood? Well, of course, it's because the share certificates, they have their registration marks. I haven't got them here, but the border lines of the certificates, the text is all here, blah, 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 blah. And these up here will be the registration marks. So I need a piece of wood at least this big. And I think what I'll do, as I said, because I may be doing gray blocks, I think I'll just use one of our normal share certificate blocks, zone one, zone two, and if I want to do it, zone three and four on the back. If not, I can save this and use it for next year's share certificate. We're okay. So all I need to do here today now is do the usual registration, paste her down, and let's get carving. Excuse me again, it's going to be a hundred times here today. Excuse me. There's also this block. Another reason why I chose this one is we have a huge, massive split and a knot here. If this was a normal design, we would have this big area that we wouldn't be able to use. It's no problem here because our, our little man is going to go nearby and the area near here will be very very hard rock hard so it's good I, I'm not uh, I want a hard piece of wood for this because we've got some fine lines so are we gonna have a peel wait 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 I don't think so just a minute hang on I think this is three millimeter gumpy don't get excited about peels there might be a peel, there might not. Don't, don't, uh, don't get excited about that. I just used for the gumpy for this because it wasn't a full, we don't need a full uh, area. I just used a scrap. Actually, it was a scrap from underneath the bench here. You know, when I do peeling and stuff, we pull off gumpy here. So I just used a little piece left over. So I don't know what it is. So.
That seems like a nice piece of wood. Bit of a shame to use such a large area for such a small design, but it can't be helped. The other uh, little bit strange thing about this registration mark here, the registration marks are upside down. What I mean is, you know, we're, we're, when I do the printing on these share certificates, I do it with the print upside down. I don't think I have one here to show you. you know. the, the reason being, it's, a, it's an A4 size design. The share certificate is the full share certificate, but the woodblock printed area is in one area up at the top. And it's always, always better for us to, if we have the registration marks as close as possible to the printed area. If we did it this way, if I put the paper in here and had the printed area a long way away, then any distortion in the paper really has a chance to magnify across that large distance. So what we'll do is I when it comes time to get the share certificates printed, we use our inkjet paper, we moisten it, it swells like crazy because it's just inkjet printer, inkjet paper. And we print it like this with the registration marks as close as possible to the woodblock print part. Remember, the ones we do usually are two, three, four, five, six colors. That's it, it's all printed. We then dry the paper back to flat. Then it goes in the Canon or Epson printer to do inkjet to get the rest of the part. We can't do the inkjet part first because when we moisten the paper for the printing, it would smear that stuff. So it's going to be printed upside down. So I'm going to paste this thing on just as it is here, like this, and the image will be upside down reference to the registration marks. It doesn't matter at all. Sensei Marjan is here. He's got an email from him this morning. Thank you for the update, sir. Thank you for the reminder. The Sensei and I have a date in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, so when you get your share certificates and open them up, you have to turn it this way around. So there's quite a lot of glue. I don't know. I don't know. About normal, I think. Seems okay. Remember, I moistened the block first there. No, it's three millimeter gumpy. Let's pull it off anyway, but let's have a look and see. It's uh, not glued to the edge here, so that's it.
No. Okay, we're, we're going to get a, a rule back, but it's not going to come off. Look. There's not enough to pick up here, but we'll pull it off here. We're going to do this also without a borderline. I tried this last night when I was on the iPad looking at this thing doing a mock-up with the share certificates. I put a black borderline around it and then decided, no, just take it off. We'll leave this guy. And he's going to print on the, on the bare paper of the share certificates. So it won't be a border. Here we are. We are good to go. about camellia oil and we have some oil I'll be putting it on in a moment when I start carving if somebody else says I tried cooking with camellia oil once and it was awful but it's funny because the camellia oil we have here at the moment uh, in Japan you can buy it camellia oil you don't buy it in the supermarket for food use you buy it in the, the drugstore it's sold here for use people put it on their hair not so much uh, younger people nowadays but the people of my generation, whatever, or in, quote, the old days, camellia oil was a hairdressing. People would, would get it and put it in their hair and it would slick up and shiny up their hair a bit. It was a hairdressing uh, thing. We, it, it's sold here in Japan in little tiny glass bottles, pure camellia oil. It's all, it all comes from one place, Oshima Island, down in the uh, Pacific, not too far from Tokyo. And they sort of have a lock on it there. And it's expensive. You get a little bottle like this and it'll be 2,500 yen or 3,500 yen or something like this. And we use quite a lot of it here. We use it, we, we hold it these days. After we get it from the bottle, we pour it into these little spray things. And a goto sound, the baron maker, prepares these. And away you go. But it's so expensive that once, uh, one day, one day, I didn't even know, 20, 25, 30 years ago, I had a bright idea. I'd try and buy it somewhere else. It must have been just after the internet started up, late 1990s or whatever. I googled around and I found a place where I could order camellia oil and I ordered it from China. And the price was like a fraction of whatever. I sent emails back and forth and they said minimum order a 55 gallon drum. You know, the, the, the oil drum type thing was the minimum order. <laughs> I just laughed and laughed and laughed. I mean, this is what we use on our desk here. This will do me for a year. And the minimum order was a 55-gallon drum. Uh, so whatever, I, there was emails back and forth. And they, they agreed that they would, would take some of this, put it in some plastic bottles. I think the bottle size were like 200 milliliters. And they would sell me a, a, a carton full of 100 of these little bottles. So we got 20 liters of the stuff. So I did, it came in, I imported it, we've still got it in Ome. And we have a, enough camellia oil now to last for dozens and dozens and dozens of lifetimes. But the point is, in China, that company, they were selling it to restaurants. So camellia oil in that culture wasn't used for hairdressing, or anyway, not specifically for hairdressing, but it was used for cooking. But in Japan, I remember asking people at that time, what do you think, cook with this stuff? And they're like, what? What? It's like you ask somebody to say, should we do cooking with motor oil or whatever? You know, you don't do such a thing or you don't think of such a thing. I don't know if it's the same product or what. I don't know. Anyway, here in Japan, camellia oil is for hairdressing and for woodbuck printmakers. I guess in China, it's for, it's for cooking. So I hear. I don't really know. Let's cut some wood. How long has it been since we did any carving? I don't remember, actually. 
What was the job I was doing? It was the hooks I print, the guys with the long necks. It wasn't that long ago. And here we are, hooks I again. Actually, there's another carving job coming up. You know, I've got to get this done and out of the way because we have another carving job coming up. Uh, for the same reason, this is March, and April is the beginning of our cycle of sending Patreon prints. And this is the share certificate print, but also we have to get the next pair of Patreon chibi prints ready. A lot of people have just got the previous one, the one with the cat knocking the blue pigment off the table, but that was last year's print. So I've got to start on the next one. And our, our uh, friendly designer, John Amos, is, as we speak, he is working on the next design. And we're not going to do a joke design, a gag design, this next one. You know, the one with the cat and the great wave. That was a, a kind of a gag. It was okay. But we're not going to do a gag this next time. It'll just be a normal, quiet print. Okay, where should we start? Let's just get this extra outside area done. Do I have any rituals you'll follow when starting a new coffee? No, just get to work. We'll have a normal stream today. We'll carve here for whatever. Uh, I have a little interlude partway along. I have a short little video. Short, I mean literally short, like a like one minute video. It was sent to me a couple of days ago by one of the staff members in Ome. She had seen something out the window, so she grabbed her phone, headed to the entranceway, and uh, took a little quick video on her phone and sent it over to me. So we'll share that partway through the stream today. She saw something in the river and thought, wow, cool, let's share this with the Asaksa staff members. What did she see? Ducks and ducklings, no. Jimmy Hoffa, good idea, not here. Kingfisher, not a bit too soon in the year for the kingfisher. Hakubishi, not during the day, they come out at night. You're not gonna see one of those during the day. This is a hard little piece of wood. Well, it is right here near that, uh, we're near that knot. So this is a hard piece of wood. I'm going to be careful if I'm a little bit careless here. Pachink, we're going to get a broken knife. Not sure what other news I have. The uh, 
restaurant across the street is in their, uh, what do they call it, having a cold open? What do they call it when there's a restaurant? They're not open to the public yet, but they are open uh, to invitees and friends. So they've got their uh, ceremonial flowers outside and they're, they're busy. There's people that are lining up and I guess they've got a little ticket. So they must have uh, prepared tickets or something. So they're open up and running in their trial period. And the sign uh, on the door says, open uh, March 21st. The 21st is the first day they're open for general business, but uh, they're, they're really cooking. They seem really, really busy. So I'll give it a try. I don't think I'll go in the first day, but I'll give it a try sometime next couple of weeks, see what it's like. It might be too, uh, what's the word, upscale. They, they might be too, I don't know, I would say pretentious. They would just say uh, stylish or something. I don't know. I just want places to get quiet dinner, you know. So we'll see. We'll give them a try. Other than that, the, the Hontani, the spring tour season now, is in full swing. The streets are jammed. If you are in the district, keep in mind that it's really, really difficult now to get, uh, get a meal here, either at lunch or at dinner. There's lineups everywhere, all day long. So it's not a bad idea to plan your Asaksa time, you know, get there in the morning, do the temples, Mokohankan, or whatever places you want to see, but maybe think about moving somewhere else for dinner, because uh, it's crowded. And it affects, you know, me, whatever. Last night to get dinner, I had to go to a place across the river. I hiked across the, the Azambabashi, over past the Asahi beer place. The little restaurant I go to over there, and it's really, really quiet. It's actually too quiet, not healthy for their business. And I chatted with the guy there, and I said, nobody here. He said, I know, over the river there, there's just millions of people. And he was crying the blues, and I was happy. <laughs> so. That's one of the places on my restaurant list. I did make a, li a list there, and a couple of the places are across the river, rather than being here in central Asakusa. The Mr. Kobe Beef next door here. <laughs> Good username. He's okay. He's surviving. It's never crowded. There's never lineup. There's always space there. Again, there's too many. The franchise is just too many on the ground here, and the prices are high. They're high prices, you know. So he, he, I don't know if he will survive or not. Whatever. The restaurant guide, it's online there. I don't, I, I don't have a link. If you go to the mokohankan.com slash asakusa, there's a page comes up there, and the restaurant guide is linked from that page. So mokohankan.com slash asakusa. And actually, I'll be changing it because uh, I put a restaurant in there a while ago, and I've had second thoughts about it. I've been back a couple of times, and I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to delete them from that list, not for any, you know, uh, just the food, the value isn't there. Uh, when I saw them at first, I was really captivated, it was really nice, I enjoyed a pleasant meal, but after going back three or four times, I realized that it doesn't belong on my recommended list. Uh, I'm not enjoying it myself, and I really don't want other people to, to think, wow, this is what Dave thinks is a good idea. So I'm going to pull one off my list there.
two Moko Hankam barons, yeah. So the point about that list is there's going to be no stars or barons on that list because the point about being on the list is that I like the place. So I'm not going to rank that this one's only one. If it was only a one, I wouldn't put it on the list in the first place. Talking to me, have I been to Buffalo or the Niagara Falls region? I used to go to Niagara Falls every Monday morning <laughs> for, for about two years. I visited Niagara Falls every Monday morning. Never been to Buffalo. I guess there must be people on the, in the chat here who know why. Do I have to explain? What kind of work would I have? Or what kind of thing would I be involved in where I would make a trip to Niagara Falls once a week regularly every Monday morning? Except holidays. What could I possibly have been doing? It was in the late 70s, 1977, 78. Music crimes, yes, 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 exactly. We must have told these stories. It was sheet music crimes, yes. For the benefit of the people who don't know the backstory, just very quickly, I was working, living in Toronto, working in a music store, a wholesale music store that dealt in things like sheet music and the saxophones for school bands and tubas and stuff like that. And at the time, the sheet music business in Canada was locked up by importers. For example, a publishing company, a Warner Brothers, whatever, in America, would have a Canadian agent that Canadian agent was the only place to get the Warner Brothers sheet music for your school band or, or whatever. And those Canadian agents jacked up the price considerably. So we, as a music shop in Toronto and Vancouver, selling sheet music to schools, our boss came up with a good idea. We opened two subsidiary companies, one in Blaine, Washington State, and one in Niagara Falls, New York. And when a customer needed a piece of sheet music from, for example, the Warner Brothers Music Corporation, our subsidiary company in Niagara Falls would order it. And Warner Brothers would send it to the Niagara Falls address. I then drove down every Monday morning and collected the 50, 100, 200, whatever packages were there that week, drove back across the border, did the customs forms, and then we sent the music to our customer at a very reasonable price. And it worked very well for a couple of years. Every now and then, uh, one of the publishing companies would sort of wonder, why on earth is so much music going to this little tiny border town? And we would get uh, maybe a call from the sales agent or something. But once they saw the volume we were doing, they said, oh, I guess, uh, sure, uh, go, go ahead. And that was our business model for the sheet music part of our business. So. So every Monday morning, when I was in Vancouver, I drove to Blaine, Washington. And when I was in uh, Toronto, I drove down to Niagara Falls. Tossed the music boxes in the van, came across the border, did a semblance of paperwork, and kept our customers happy. Took a look at the falls as I drove over back and forth.
How do we get started on this topic? Well, somebody asked, I guess, is there somebody living in Niagara Falls? Somebody from Buffalo? The one where I got arrested wasn't Niagara Falls. The, the time I had too many packages in my truck, I hadn't declared them all on the customs form. I had said 55 packages and I actually had 255 packages, whatever, I don't remember the numbers. No, that was at the Vancouver side in Washington State. And I didn't actually get arrested. They took me in for questioning and at the end of the day, they let me go. It was a long day waiting in the office, talking to the RCMP officers. They seized the goods and they seized the truck, but they let the little boy go. So I wasn't actually, quote, arrested and charged. I was held by the police for the full day. And then they said, okay, you can go. And I'm like, my truck said, no, no, we're keeping the truck. That's not yours anymore. You can go. And there I am on the highway, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> So I was detained and not arrested. And how many times in my life I've been detained? I don't know. One, two, three. Three, I guess, unless there's more that I've forgotten. Well, they weren't robbed by the police. That's the way the law works. If you are caught, quote, smuggling stuff, they seize the goods, of course, and they seize the vehicle in which the smuggling was taking place. If it had been an airplane, they seize the plane. This is it. And then they sell it later on. That's the way it works in Canada, whatever. I don't know about other countries or whatever. So we lost the truck. We lost all the goods that were in, the, the, all the sheet music that was in there that day. There were no tubas in the truck that day. We lost all the sheet music and we lost the truck. The boss was not happy, but, 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 the thing I had been doing, the pattern of behavior that I had been doing, was what the boss had told me to do. When I was early with the company, the boss says, hey, I'll show you how we do the border routine. I'm like, okay, show me what's going on. And we do this, we do this. He puts 50 packs in the truck. And as it turned out, sheet music, there was no duty on sheet music at that time. And there was no sales tax on sheet music. So for us, going through all the paperwork, just to have a zero at the end, no duty payable drive back, Instead of doing three, four hours of paperwork, we just simplified it. And we weren't cheating in that we weren't evading taxes, but we weren't declaring the things the way they should have been declared. So we got clobbered for it. And I happened to be the guinea pig that happened to be the boy in the truck the day they decided to shake us down. Not shake us down, the day they decided to check on what we were doing. So it was a van. It was, I say, a truck. It was a, it was a Dodge, Dodge van, you know, a minivan, whatever they're called, you know, so... Well, we, 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 uh, we knew, you know, I guess Bill, the owner, he was thinking it was a, a cavalier thing. We don't know any duty, so who cares? It doesn't matter. They're not losing any money, but they care about that kind of stuff. You know, people at the border do care that your declarations are in order. And, uh, and maybe they were thinking, oh, ho, ho, there's going to be drugs and stuff in here. And there wasn't, of course. We weren't doing anything like that. But the young agent who took, took me down... He may have been really excited, you know, my God, we're actually, we've got a real smuggler here. And at the end of the day, all they found was sheet music. He may have been a little bit disappointed, but still, that was that. No, we would never have, you know, I'm, I'm a decent boy. I would never have been actually smuggling anything, you know, anything smugglable. But we did lose the truck, you know. And what was worse, and of course, uh, uh, some weeks later, maybe it was months later, I don't remember, a bunch of uh, uh, in border agents came to our head office. Now that we had been caught once bringing undeclared goods across the border, they wanted to go back to our paperwork for years. Uh, they were there for months. We had to give them a table and space for the agents and book work. And it was a huge headache for a huge, long, long, long time. 
but there was nothing the boss could do to me about it because I was just following my instructions, you know. <laughs> Isn't that what all the soldiers say? I was just following instructions. Ah, whatever, it makes a good story years and years and years later. You know. A pattern here with Mr. Bull with duties and taxes. We had a Winnebago that wasn't involved in the cross-border stuff. The Winnebago was a vehicle that we had outfitted with shelves full of sheet music. The sheet music that we imported, I mean, we were a shop. We had a physical shop in Toronto, another shop in Vancouver, and we had two vehicles. In the Vancouver end, we had an old city bus, an old long diesel bus <coughs> with shelves that had been put at each end of it. And then when that finally died, we replaced it with a Winnebago, like a 30-foot Winnebago motorhome. And inside that, we had built shelves against the walls. And they were full of sheet music. And part of my job, part of the year, was to take that Winnebago, drive it around Western Canada, going to schools, call the band leader, hey, orchestra leader, come on up, we got a truck full of sheet music. Oh my God, where? Outside your front door. So that was it. That was no question. That was no connection with the border stuff. Yeah, history, history, history. Dave Bull, a Winnebago driver in the middle of a Canadian winter, you know, riding through the middle of Saskatchewan, you know. <laughs> what a beast that was. It was overloaded. Winnebagos are pretty light things. They're not built on some heavy-duty truck chassis, you know. They're built quite light, and we had overloaded that thing tremendously. Sheet music is heavy stuff. So man, that thing rocked and rolled on its way down the highway. You know, it tipped and tipped and tipped like this. <laughs> she rolled down the highway. I was a new, inexperienced driver. But man, the teachers went nuts. You know, you're a teacher in, in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan or something, you know, and you don't have any access to music for your school choir, you know. And you get the call tomorrow, our Winnebago will be pulling up to your school at 9.30 in the morning, you know. And the guy comes out, he goes in the door of the Winnebago, and there it is, it's a library. There's orchestra music, band music, choir stuff, all the top hits. They just couldn't believe it. It was one of the best services ever offered, you know. We cleaned up, absolutely cleaned up.
How's our time here? 8.48, we're about halfway through. Okay, let's look at that little video. It's really, really short, only about one, one and a half minutes long or whatever. Let's have a little click of that video. Uh, I understand it's probably going to be here at nine o'clock, so let's just look at the video first. <coughs> we have different conversations going on. Okay, where's the video? Just one sec, here we are. Oops, well, that's giving it away. Here's the, here's the video. <laughs> there, you can see it. This is from the window of our Ome Shipping Center workshop. And Nishiyama san one of the employees there, I guess that's when she was coming in in the morning, she saw something moving in the water. And these things are really, really, if you <coughs> cough or if you move when it can see you, it's gone. They are really, really, really sensitive to human, uh, to human, uh, whatever. She's moving here to get it. And at this point, this thing's probably going to fly away, but it doesn't. She must have been really, really. Here it comes from behind the tree. Here she comes. He. It. And Ishiyama san is standing on the stairway of our, my house, looking down into the river. So this is a shot of the river behind my home. I believe it's what in Japanese is called a shirasagi. It's a white heron in Japanese egret heron i don't know and at that point she turned her camera video off and she turned her camera on and this is the animal so we understand it to be a sagi a heron but whether that translates as egret i'm sorry i don't know the difference i really don't know and it's the same one we see in many of our woodbuck prints this was uh when was this this was thursday afternoon she sent this over so yeah, it was nice. That stream is there, you know. And you can see the, you know, if you go back to that video there for a second, if we, if we see the, where are we here? Uh, the, the environment here. It's middle of spring. I mean, all the greenery is gone. And three or four months from now, this is going to be, you won't be able to see the waterfall at the end because there's so much greenery in the way. But this is the time of year when there's the least greenery there, so. Yeah, John's got it. It's called Shirasagi because it looks like the castle. Yeah, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but what I'm surprised about is that it didn't fly away. I was never able to get a shot of one this close myself. I would see it in the distance, quietly tiptoe outside, get my camera ready, and as soon as you just breathe, they're gone. So I'm astonished that she was able to catch this this close. And there are lots of fish in there. We're looking at small little fingerlings. They're small kind of trout called yamame. There are lots of fish in there. There's uh, that bird and the kingfishers and lots of fish. Uh, lots of birds make a living getting their food in that river. Last night, Sunday night, it was the busiest night of the week, of course, for Yahoo Auctions here. I was uh, up quite late last night, got my finger on the button. I scored a few, and at one point I got a bit of a surprise. There was a, a book up on Yahoo Auctions last night, the same book that we've showed in our uh, show and tell the last few weeks. You know, that set of three, the three albums that I got from the Taisho era that was showing uh, the history of ukiyo in reproductions. These were the prints I was uh, 
the ones that were toned a little bit, but they had the beautiful color balance. You know, we showed them in the last show and tell. Anyway, last night, somebody else had two of those books. One of them was the same book that we have in the current uh, collection here right now, and another one was a new one. So Dave was eager. I would like to get this. Price wasn't so high at the beginning, so I stood by, and when the time came ready, the time was almost over, I put my bid in, tried to put my bid in, and instead I got a red flashing error message from Yahoo that said, you cannot bid on this item because you have been blocked by the seller. And I'm like, what? What? So I then go and look at it more carefully. And yeah, it's the same seller that we talked about a few months ago. The same person who I found was I don't know, fraudulent to me. I had called him up and canceled and blah, blah, blah. We no longer do business with each other. And it's the same guy. <laughs> and I hadn't, I hadn't looked at the name before bidding. So anyways, it turns out that he has blocked me. So whatever seems also, you know, can't, can't be helped. He doesn't want me bidding on his auctions. And, uh, that's fine. We no longer do business. His prints are out of the shop here and uh, we're kind of, we're history. But I hadn't noticed it. So he has a no bull policy. <laughs> so... So whatever, I just, I, once I was, once I understood what was happening, I just laughed about it. But I had been a bit shocked because that's a, an error message or a message from the Yahoo system that I had never seen before. I guess it's, it's part, part and parcel of their, their management system, but I had never seen it. So this guy has, uh, has blocked me just to make sure we don't get in trouble with each other anymore, you know. So I didn't follow it up. Uh, it must have, it must have, the auction must have finished. Somebody else got a good deal or a bad deal or went too expensive or maybe he did the usual thing with his uh, jacking up prices. I don't know. I didn't follow it. But yeah, there were two of those albums up there last night. So. It wasn't a very productive uh, auction session last night. I didn't win a whole bunch of cool stuff. A few days before I did, but the last night, nothing much. So. so it's good. I mean, I'm not actually, I'm not uh, uh, frustrated, upset by this. You know, I really don't want to do business with the guy. So if I had noticed that it was him, I wouldn't have tried to put a bid in anyway. So we, we both got what we wanted here. So, yeah. But just, I'd never seen that message because as far as I know, I'm not being blocked by anybody else. I mean, we, we are a, a good auction uh, participant. You know, we pay our bills and uh, blah, blah. You know. Yahoo. Oh, where are we? Oh, it's Ayano-san. Hi, hi, hi. It's time. Hey, nice. oh. Now that you're walking from Wayno, the time varies a little bit. You know, come in a bit closer. So, before you were doing this, sort of the time, you always came in the door like seconds before nine o'clock. Yeah, it's just based on the trains. Like sometimes mm. the train gets delayed. Mm. Sometimes I always take the same train. Yes, but the point, but the fact that you're now walking for fifteen or twenty minutes, it introduces yeah. a bit more variability into the time. So it used to be almost to the second you walked in the door, like three yeah, seconds. Uh, um, the train is more trustworthy. Uh, the other, the other train. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a combination. Maybe this train is not so trustworthy. Plus yeah. the walking time, you know. So. The walking time doesn't really change. You, know, you don't think so? At the same pace, but uh, you know, like the train, like mm. it really. Okay. Every okay. Day, I so. I can't argue there. Maybe the train is more diverse, but I would bet that your walking time does. Because I know from my own pool time, you know, there's the other lady in the pool, and it varies little bit by little bit, day by day. I'm too slow, too fast. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Not really work okay. Was not really. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or sometimes traffic light, not the, the not the walking yeah, speed, yeah. the traffic light. How are you doing this morning for the? I, I don't uh, wanna, sorry, I don't want to talk about it. The more I talk about <laughs> it, the more okay. it becomes. So I okay. don't want to. I okay. can't even look at your eyes. I can see that you have bad sleep. There's a now, topic. So. Okay. <laughs> I yeah. Do you understand this feeling? I don't know if I, I, I agree. I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. I'm yeah. laughing. I'm laughing. I agree. Talk about it. You know. No argument. Okay, so. Good enough. What should we talk about? Here, so? <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. <coughs> no more talking. Hi. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah, change the topic here. Uh, Juicy Band. Did you get my email? You haven't seen it yet. You have it somewhere around your desk. Well, I, I I ordered it and then it arrived. I know it arrived, but I didn't receive it. But I re I know that you arrived because you told me that he arrived. Yes. So I think you opened it and then you left it. Okay, sorry, I, you keep saying like you, you, you. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But um, I, I, I agree, but actually I did. I took this place apart yesterday trying to find it. So I yeah. did go through it trying to find it. So uh, the what we're talking about, the Jushi Ban. You know the embossing plates that you see me use? Uh, Kubota-san at the moment is doing the eighth print in the Kyoto Journey series and I did actually a, an unusual thing. Months before I ordered the plates that had the name of it. Sometimes I forget and it turns out that we have to order it at the last minute. But I can't find it and I know we ordered it and I know it came. And it's not, it's not, I understand where is it, just I can't find it so I'm going to need her help today. And we may have to give up and order another one, I don't know. The thing is, it's on the same plate with number seven and number eight are together. Okay. So we did, we cut off, we must have chopped off number seven and put it on a plate and then used it. It should be somewhere. So it should be, well, it's of course somewhere. Yeah. She's looking around my desk here, whatever. Anyway, okay. Your, your, your desk looks uh, cleaner, so did someone kind of organize your desk recently? Or? I hope not, I hope not. You know, I've been, you know, trying to keep a little bit, you know. Well, when I went to Canada, you know, so, so, so. Anyway, we... We will do this, but okay. I did try yesterday to find this thing, and I can't find it, so... Mm. The quote at the moment is doing the prints, and the prints will come back from him Wednesday or Thursday. So there's no panic on this, but in the next couple of days, if we can't find it, I just need to order another one, and we're okay. Mm. There were a bunch of titles and all you know, No, there were only two. I, know, I, I went back to look at the EPS file, and what it was was we asked for a bunch of new Carver printers, things, yeah. And then on the same plate, we had just two, one, two, the name for number seven and number eight was on the same, it was a small plate this big. So going, going by the, the uh, uh, mm. illustrator data. So, and we did have it because we used number seven. So anyway, whatever, we'll, we'll sort it out. Okay. I'll have another look. Yeah. Mm. Any, I uh, know you're in Winter Park, it's cherry trees, a little bit more open, not yet, no change? I, I gave up going outside. Oh, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. I would love to go, it was yeah. such a nice yeah. weather, so yeah. I yeah. would have yeah. enjoyed yeah. if I went out, but... We're, we're in now the last few days before the main cherry trees open here in Tokyo. It's a couple of days now, so, so uh, on, uh, on the weekend I walked uh, just a little bit by the river, and most of them are still closed. Here and there, there is a tree that's open. It's already started. I mean, the, the official Sakura Matsuri, the right. signs are up and the booths are up and the, the booths for selling sake and snacks and stuff on the other side. The, the Sumida. Are not, already not quite yet. Not okay. quite yet. Okay. I think what they've done is they've built their infrastructure early because they were they got to be ready for this thing. Nobody knew what was going to happen. Right, right. So the, the Matsuri infrastructure is now in place. The oh, garbage okay. cans are ready. The, the, the snack booths are ready. The beer sellers have all got mm -hmm. their stuff set up. And the shops are open too? I, I don't know. I saw, I saw, I was I looking because they're across the river. I saw all the, the shops are there. They physically built them. Mm. Whether or not they're open yet, I don't know. Okay. So, but any minute now, it's all going to explode. Mm -hmm. And based on our experience with the little cherry tree that was across the street here, which was, it opened for, my God, 10, 11, 12 days. It was something crazy. After it blossomed, it just sat there day by day by day by day. Mm -hmm. So it could be that we are in for a spectacular spectacular cherry season this year. Fingers are still crossed, so don't quote me on this, but it could look right. really good. It could all get hurt by two or three days of cold, windy, rainy weather, which we don't know about, but... The temperature will drop this week. It'll yeah, drop, it's but really it's... Cold yes, covered, but yeah. cold and clear, which is okay. It'll okay. hold them back, and then boom, they open real wide, so... Hmm. So not yet, not yet, but watch this space. Hmm. And once they're open, I think it's going to be spectacular. So We'll see. We'll see. Ah, yeah.
Do you want me to look for uh, the Jushi Ban upstairs somewhere? Well, check the drawer again, because maybe like some people go through the drawer and put it upside down. I try and keep that drawer in chronological order, so the new ones are on the top. But it's possible maybe it's at the bottom and I didn't go through. So. Okay. Don't waste too much time on it, you know, okay. but I'm just mentioning it to you. We have to do something about this today, so. Okay. Okay. Thanks, I understand. Okay. See you upstairs soon. Yeah. It's funny, she didn't want to talk about the allergy thing, and I get it, you know, I get it. Even, even thinking about it and talking about it seems to make it worse. I get it. <clears throat> I had it at the beginning, you know, an hour ago here, and it was because we were talking about it, and it was just getting worse. Once I started carving and we forgot about it and didn't talk about it, it seems to lay back a bit, you know. So I get what she was, what she was on about there. Does the tourist volume drop much after cherry season? Well, yes and no. I mean, the, the Japanese tourist season... It, of course, has two massive peaks, the spring peak, which is sort of about cherry blossoms, but not just cherry blossoms, and then the autumn peak. So it's from, from starting beginning of March through March, which March and April are the big, big seeds, March, April, May, and then October, November at the other end of the calendar. So. The sound you hear is the garbage truck that stops outside the Korean hot dog restaurant. And there's going to be lots of garbage today because, man, those guys, they are one of the most booming businesses on this street, bar none. You know, I think at the beginning, remember we, we talked about this, they sort of maybe struggled. They kept changing their menu. They had a, a bunch of stuff they were offering and it didn't seem to be working for them because they changed the menu, then they changed the menu again. Well, whatever the current iteration of their food offerings is, it seems to be hitting the spot because they are, even off-season, they are busy, busy, busy. They are one of the absolute energetic businesses on this street. I've got no idea what sort of volume of money and sales they do every day. I have no access to that stuff. But they are flourishing. There's none of this, I give them six months. Nothing of that for those guys. They are flourishing. I think maybe another reason I had perhaps been a bit not so optimistic about them when they opened a couple of years ago is because it was one of these foods that was a, it's sort of a, a boom type food. They get really popular on social media, everybody takes pictures and all this kind of stuff and everybody goes there to see what it's all about. And then a few months later, boom, the boom is over and everybody's moved on to something else. So that was another reason I was a bit sort of not optimistic about them. I was wrong, I was wrong. There are people that go there for dinner They've got the chairs out on the sidewalk, and I have to, I, I push to get by now in the evenings. And they've started, like they serve food in bowls out on the sidewalk. They've really gone to try and be like an Asian, uh, Asian yatai kind of thing. And it could be that they're going to push a bit too far, and the city will have to get, uh, push them back about this seating outside. But they are doing very, very, very well. No question about it. We also, uh, in our own season, we are a very uh, flourishing little business, people coming in and out, in and out. So when you think about the street here overall, we are one of the, the top flourishing businesses on the street. The lady with the coffee shop two doors down from us, Tenkoku, she has a steady clientele. It's down from what it was. She was in a, a, a manga comic book and then she was also featured in an anime 
And that gave her a huge lot of popularity for a while, but that's dribbled away now, that's history. So she now has a steady, stable sort of clientele, but nothing dramatic, no big lineups. The Dorayaki shop, which opened about oh, half a year or so ago, they seem to be doing okay. They close early each day when they've run out of stuff. So they're sort of missing a bit of the business model, I think. They open early, cook the stuff there, in, and once that batch that they've cooked is gone, they just close the door. So if you're looking for a dorayaki, you're there. Don't, don't bother after 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, because they're done. And we'll see how the new restaurant fits in. Chichio, I don't know how to pronounce it. C-I-C-C-I-O is the name of the place. I don't have any idea how to pronounce that, really. Surfing print update, the blocks are still right here beside me and as soon as I have a job that's not time sensitive, the surfer girl will be the next carving. I'm sorry, it's time sensitive jobs always jump in first. The anime in Asakusa, I don't remember. Uh, it was it was related to the salaryman food thing. It was a movie first. It was a I think it was a Netflix show, salaryman some either salaryman in general or a salaryman who really liked sweet stuff. And one of the places that he went to to get his hit of sweet food was this this place here. So it was a, it was a, I think a Netflix show first, then it got picked up by an anime. But years ago, before I came here, she was featured in a manga. And the name of the place is Ten Koku, the little coffee shop nearby here. So I'm sorry, I don't know anything about the names of the manga and stuff like that. I don't know, I'm sorry. Gourmet Samurai, is that what it was? I, I, I don't know. All I know is the general concept. So for a while there, she was buzzing and there were lineups. And her normal lineup, her normal clientele is young ladies. She makes a certain type of coffee and a certain couple of snacks that it seems appeal to uh, to young ladies who are going out for you know a good coffee and a drink together. Very common to see two two women together uh, going in there or or in there at a table for two. Not so much men or salary men. But I think when that uh, TV series was on, the clientele switched over and it was more men that were going there for a while. I think we talked about it at the time. Maybe didn't we even, we had a link to a video clip or something. I, I don't remember clearly. It's a few years back now. Pleasant woman that runs the place. I don't know her name. We, we, we are not beyond the uh, nodding at each other level of conversation, you know, nice weather today and all that kind of stuff. I've never actually had an extended conversation with her. She's busy. I don't go in there to bother her. And she's busy. She runs the place pretty much by herself. On weekends, she has a, 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 a girl that comes to help serve and stuff. You know?
the schedule now for the chat for the streaming here for the next few few days, couple of weeks. As far as I can see at the moment, we're going to have a normal schedule, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday streaming. The reason I bring this up at the moment is because there is a possibility that I might have to do a different stream or I might have to miss one stream somewhere in the next two or three weeks. I need to make a trip up to Fukui Prefecture to visit our paper maker. I do this every year actually, usually in February, but I didn't get up there this time because of different stuff that was going on. So I do have to schedule the trip up there and it's going to be at his convenience, not mine. And if he says, for example, well I can see on Monday, then it'll have to be Monday that I see him. And uh, we won't be streaming that day or something. So it's, uh, at the moment again, we're okay. I'll be here every day as far as I can see, every, every normal day that I can see. But stand by uh, to get news of an impending change. And uh, I do have to go and see him. Our yearly trip up there to, to touch base and to see how they're doing and uh, put our order of washi in for the next, uh, for the next 12 months next 12 months meaning what they're going to deliver in the next 12 months and we will be using it one year or two years from now we're we're way ahead we're we're about two years in advance of our paper use so the stuff they send us in any given year doesn't really get used for another at least a year and sometimes two the paper seasons for a while you know it seems to be better that way than using it fresh It also gives us a safety margin if something happens to them and they can't deliver paper or if the causal crop fails or something. We're not out of business that day. We're out of business a year later if we're not able to sort something out. But so it gives us a safety margin. It's the opposite of the just-in-time delivery system. You can't do that with woodblock printmaking. <laughs> How's our time coming? Getting close to the show and tell? Oh, it's 9.15, 9.16. Oops, time for show and tell. Okay, we do have a show and tell today. Uh, we have a bunch of boxes. Actually, this is, quote, old stuff. For those of you who joined, here's what we're doing. We're carving today. This is the image that will be part of our share certificate for 2024, which goes out to the top level Patreon supporters starting in late April or uh, early May. So over the next few streams, this is my job. This is what I will be doing. I don't know how many streams it will take, but whatever. This is my work for the next little while. Okay, now we have a bunch of boxes and packages here that haven't been opened. And there's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five of them. And I don't know what's inside because this is stuff that we got months ago. It's just been sitting here waiting for me to get time to get to it. So I honestly have no clue what's inside this package here. Where's the date? February the 12th. So it's been here for a month. It must have arrived. Yeah, I must have found this object just before I went to Canada. You found it. Thank you. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the Jushi board that we ordered quite recently, but this is from like a month or so Yes, so, so I did it. Yes, and that's exactly it. Spring sunshine. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Good. She saved my really life. Thank you. Board. Where where was it? Can I ask? Uh, it, in, the, in the Jushi board. It was in the drawer. Yeah, but it wasn't in the in, on the top. There so. we are. So, so yeah. thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, actually, at, at the moment, can you leave it in the drawer right there, okay. just so that if we leave it here on my desk, <laughs> we're going to get back to say the same thing. Thank you very much, Anasan. Thank you. Efficient staff. Surround yourself with the most efficient people you can find. They don't make me look bad. They make me look good. Actually, that was something I learned back when I was trying to be a musician. You know, I worked at a music store for a while, but I was trying to be a musician. You know, the flute thing didn't work out. I didn't do a well in the auditions for orchestral, fl orchestral flute. So I was trying to make a living as a guy gigging around town in Vancouver. I had my tenor saxophone, flute, alto sax, baritone sax. I was trying to make a living gigging around. 
So as one of the things to try and get more work, I set up a little a trio. I got a fake book and some lead sheets. I had my flute and tenor sax. And together with people I hired, a bass player and a jazz guitar player, we gigged. We did like lounge music and stuff like this. No big career of this. I only got whatever, 10 jobs or so altogether before I gave it up. But what I did learn was this. <clears throat> In order to, to make the thing successful and in order to make your own endeavor move forward, to plan A, plan B. Plan A, I want to make myself look really good. So you hire people that are not quite good and you look like the best in town there. Plan B, hire people that are better than you at this thing and just make yourself part of that group and they will pull you up. You get what's going on here. That's what I did or that's what I tried to do. I tried to hire people who were better at that thing than me. And they could carry it and they did a good job. And at the end of the day, people were, oh, that was really cool, really cool, really cool. Whether or not I had done a good job or not. So like, you learned it, you know. Don't worry about those people showing me up. Because I really was a poor musician doing that. I really wasn't very good at it. I was a terrible little jazz player. And I really wasn't good enough to do it. Which is why after some years, I, I gave it up and got out of it. But having real pros. I really don't know what's in here. If you're counting layers, I don't know what to say. What did I get? What did I buy? I don't remember. Oh, I remember this. Yes. Look at this. This is going to be mm, pre-war, 1920s maybe. And I think it's not a full set. It's Kabuki plays. And there are 16 Kabuki plays represented. And they are represented in what's called Kumadori form. This is a woodblock print. These are not decals. I've never been in the situation, but I guess I am told that what happens at the end of a kabuki performance, the guys go backstage, <clears throat> and whether this is something that happens every day or just sometimes, I don't know. But kabuki, he's been there, he's been made up, and he's got all the stuff, he's done the show, he's got backstage, they take off the kimono, he sits there, time to get cleaned up. And what can be done is they got some thin sort of tissuey type paper. They put the paper all over the guy's face, press it in, press it in, press it in. Maybe they rub, maybe they put oil on or something. And when they pull the paper off his face, it comes off with a transfer of the makeup that has been on his face. I guess it's greasy type red and blue and all these makeups. And the sheet of paper comes off as a transfer of this makeup. And it's called Kumadori. And maybe it's a deal. Maybe they do this every day and the fans wait in line or they pay big money to get one of these. I really don't know much more about it than the fact that they exist. But what we have here, we have woodblock prints made of the specific makeup pattern from some of these guys. And they're marked with the name of Kabuki plays. Some I can read, some I can't. Skeroku. Uh, we have uh, Shibaraku. We have uh, Yanone. And I guess what it must be is the makeup for this guy doing a specific role must match the role. Again, I know nothing about this other than that it must exist. That's the makeup that was applied to that actor for that specific role. This is the, the famous one, Shibaraku, the big fabulous, wait a minute, moment in some of those kabuki plays. The, the bad guys have been getting the better up, upper hand of the good guys. The good guys look like they're going to lose. And parachuting in from somewhere comes a dramatic hero. And he yells, Shibaraku! Whatever. And, it's, and this, is the, this is the face that we see. So somebody's got some information for Oshiguma. Is that the name of the actual print and sheet that we come here? Are we still counting layers? I have no idea. And this would have been made as a, as a souvenir woodblock print, going by the paper and the style and whatever. This is, I believe, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say 1930s. It matches the kind of style of thing that we see at that time and place. 
Now we have a lot of match label prints in our, in our collection that are the same theme as this. Akumodori is the makeup and the paper sheet is the Oshigomo. Okay, whatever, whatever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. People know more about this than I do. They were Yan, Yanone. These, I don't know the name of all of the plays. These look like many of the plays that are taken from what's called the uh, Kabukiju Hachiban, the 18 famous plays that are put on uh, featuring actors from the Danjuro clan. And I guess the, the, the makeup matches a specific character of the you know, the actor, there's the role. I've got a bit of foxing in the background here. The paper is not such good paper. Small dot, dot, dot foxing. Skedoku. Okay, there we have that. Good, 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 good. Very happy to get this. It's a nice addition to our little collection. It's the kind of thing that just can't exist these days because it's so expensive now to produce woodbot prints. Back in the day, you know, the, the craftsmen, the craftsmen were cheap. In the days before the yen became an international currency, you know, the craftsmen were cheap. You could easily make stuff like this and sell it. Okay, let's open another one. We've got a bunch of little packages here. Let's open one more. What have we got? No idea. No date. Oh, here we are. Date 2 7. This is February 7th, so this dates from the same time, just before I went to Canada. I did get a whole bunch of uh, prints just before I went to Canada. What have we here? I don't know. Let's see. I remember this. Yes, yes, yes. Can you read it? I wouldn't have been able to read it without knowing what it is. Otsu-e. Otsu is the name of a place. It's the old Tokaido. In fact, nowadays it's part of Kyoto. It was the last station on the Tokaido before you arrived at your destination. And people that had been on Tokaido Road for weeks and weeks and weeks, by the time they get to Otsu, they're like, I'm not stopping here, man. I'm heading right into town. Because you're just at that point, you're a couple of kilometers out of Kyoto. But it, it grew somehow, the tradition grew along the highway in the old days. There was a tradition that in Otsu, the, the people had like souvenir shops, and there was a tradition of making a certain type of pictures. They were sort of a talisman type picture. You know the kind of stuff like, I think in Chinese tradition at New Year, they've got these prints that you buy, you stick them up on the wall for good luck to keep out the bad spirits and stuff like this. They were talismans. And the Otsu A were the same thing. And what they were in the old days, they, this goes really, really back. They were printed, partly printed. The black outlines for the things were printed with rough wood blocks. And then the colors were hand painted. And the tourists just bought them all of them. You wouldn't go through Otsu without buying a pack of Otsu A. And they were the same themes. There was a, about eight, nine or 10 images and everything had to match those images. There was no variation. You, you drew your own style of the picture, but they had to be the same themes. So even now, I, I can't say so much now, but uh, certainly in the pre-war period, like where these come from, there was still a tradition of people making woodbot prints in the otsu A style. Some of these I'm going to recognize, and some of these I'm not going to recognize. And here's the package. It's a souvenir package of woodbot prints. This is not Edo-era stuff, people going down the old Tokaido. This is modern souvenir shop in Otsu City, which is now Otsu City. And they've got a little pamphlet explaining the history of what this is all about and what otsu A were for and what they were all about. Let's have a look at them. <clears throat> now, in the clean, clear otsu A tradition, these are really, really, really rough. There's no delicate work here at all. Key blocks by wood block, 
and colors splashed in by hand. And people probably do th this way. They probably sit there where the, where the tourists come and they do it in front of them. I should have, uh, if I had remembered this was going to be in here, I should have read up about the specific themes. I'm supposed to know who these people are. And they are rough, but they're supposed to be rough. There's no clean, delicate handwork in Otsue whatsoever. They are as rough as they come. Splash, 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 bang. You'd print them in literally seconds. And the woodblocks too, they wouldn't be carved by the professional woodblock carvers in Tokyo or Kyoto. They'd be carved by local people, just scratched out. Tell you what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pass them through now, then I'm going to keep them on my desk. I will look up the characters so that we can look at this again. Today's Monday. We'll look at it again on Thursday and I will know who uh, the people are. Because there is a specific story for each one of these. There is a story. It's, 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 some of them are like a gag and some of them are just a traditional object. It's the, the namazu, the fish that causes the earthquakes. And it's something to do with a monkey and a hyotan and a gourd. I, again, I, I, should be, I should know what these are. You can use Hyotan Namazu. Eto ne. Where are we? Hyotan Namazu. Wo. Shikato. Osae. Osae yosu. Osae masu. Not sure that's supposed to be. It's a bit of a strange shape. I don't know. I'll look it up and let you know. Namazu. We have it here. Namazu. Catfish, I think, a type of catfish in the West. It's traditionally, we're going back many, many, many years, traditionally, Namazu, huge catfish underlying the islands as they stirred. That was the cause of earthquakes in, in mythological terminology. This is a parody of a front runner for one of the old uh, processions that the daimyo would take going down the Tokaido. This will be a parody of a theme related to Benke, hiding under the, the, the or picking up the temple bell and, and throwing it uh, across the room. Naomi san, good morning, good morning. Hello. Actually, this is funny. This relates to the picture that we just saw a minute ago. The kabuki things I showed you. Among the kabuki plays, one was called Yanone. And one of the symbols and one of the activities that happens in that play is the hero has an old Japanese... It's not an arrow. It's a, an old weapon of sorts. It looks like an arrow, but it's got this funny thing at the top. And he sharpens it. This is a sharpening stone. And there's a scene in the play where he sharpens this thing. And this is an image parodying that thing. He's sitting on a, one of the... Uh, uh, small chairs that they used in those days. The, the, the samurai, whatever guys, had these small chairs and he's sharpening this stone. And it's a scene from the Yanone Kabuki play. We know this. We know, of course, who this is. This is another famous Otsue. We have our thunder god and I think he's grappling. He's got a grappling hook which he lowers and there's a story. Ebisu Daikoku. This is uh, Daikoku. Okay, let's make a date. I will look these up so that I can give you more information on what the actual story is. I will look them up before the next stream comes. If I had remembered these were in there, I would have prepped for this. Sorry. Anyway, there's an introduction to Otsu-e, an old tradition that still, I believe, is still honored. And if you go to Otsu these days, absolutely you will be able to buy similar prints now down there. They'd be made by the local people, not by professional workshops. In the meantime, you can look it up. Otsue. O-T-S-U-E. Otsue. 
Okay, this is Monday. I have a ton of work to do now, next few days. I'll see you again on Thursday. Almost certainly, unless something strange comes up to, to divert me, I will be continuing the carving on that Hoxha image for the share certificate. See you then. Thank you very much. The garbage cans have been restored to their rightful place. It's still windy. Maybe they'll blow down again. See you in a few days. Thanks again, guys. Three, two, one. Let's take this down. Bye for now.